Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to this stream with Eric Rosen. Uh, and we have him on the screen right now. And Eric is here. He is also streaming on his channel. This is Sagar Shah and we are going to analyze our match that took place yesterday, day before yesterday. And the aim is to learn from all that happened. <laughs> Let's see when I can get Eric on air back. Uh, and see. Hello, Eric. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Hi, welcome. How, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Very well, very well. I thought awesome. you would be preparing for your next match. <laughs> and you oh. would be very busy. <laughs> I'm still recovering from yesterday, though, so it, it's going to take a few days for me to actually start preparing for the, the next match. Is it not tomorrow? Is it not today? I hope not. Because I should know. They told me that if I went, won against you, my match would be today. Oh, so yeah. OK, so as far as I know, my my next match is scheduled for next week. Ah, next week. So it's uh, like two. ah the ninth. Okay, got it, got it. So so you have enough time. That's why I asked you. You know, is it is it? I thought it's today. So you. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Um. I've. I I just wasn't sure if uh if if you were restricted in any way, but um, yeah. I think it's it's usually better to go over the games when they're they're still fresh, right? Rather right. than like much later. But but thanks for uh, agreeing to come here and you know discuss the match overall. Uh, you know when when I want to start from the beginning also. You know both of us to get to know when you got to know that you were playing against me. How did you prepare for for the match? Sure, um, I forget exactly when I got the email that I would be playing you because mm -hmm. I saw the invite um to the event but then they didn't send out like the bracket until a few weeks later yeah and then in the initial email they 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 told me who i would be playing and they said i'd be playing sugar shah and i got really <laughs> excited because i like sugar but uh <laughs> then i realized i was going to be play you and they just misspelled your name um and i tried to find information about you like I looked up your games in the database, but it was hard to find like so many of your online games. And it, it just seems that you you don't play so much, I guess, actively online. Or maybe I couldn't find uh <laughs> find find so many of your games anyway. But um I did I, yeah, I, I did I try and scout out I your openings. Hardly open. hardly play, you know, like I have the la I think I play I played one title Tuesday or something before the event just to mm -hmm. get warmed up. So I hardly had any games uh, as such. Gotcha. Um, yeah, and of course, I, I admitted this yesterday in the post-game interview, but uh, I did watch some of the sessions with uh, with Adivan. Uh, well, and, and those were just entertaining, just uh, <laughs> from a content standpoint. Yeah, w um, were you able to enjoy them? Uh, like you also learned from them or how was it? Oh, definitely. Um, it's interesting to hear like his commentary, like as you're playing your games and like what he's kind of suggesting to improve on and suggesting uh, and like in terms of time management. Um, so I don't know how much it actually helped me prepare specifically for the match because mm. um, more of the specific preparation I did was like openings based. Uh, so of course, like I, I wanted to be prepared for like Ready and Karo Khan and uh, like the, the various openings I, I could see that you play online. Mm -hmm. um, but so uh, did, did you download yeah. some of the games from online? Because I did that. Like I downloaded all your uh, Lee Chess games. Oh yeah, I I did check. Yeah, I've. Um, I did check your Lee Chess and Chess.com games. Ah, nice. I, I just I, I knew both of your accounts as just Sagar Chess One. Got it. Um, so then I, I went through, and I assume you probably did the same, where you I... you make the tree and then you go through. And exactly. Check my repertoire. You had like twenty one thousand games on Lee Chess, <laughs> <laughs> so so it was like everything was there, 
and uh, uh, there were so many gambits and so many things that you used to play i i think one thing which i was very clear about when playing you is not to uh, fall into any of your traps you know which which you mm. play although many of them are unsound uh, i i think uh, you have a very deep knowledge in many of them so i didn't want to fall into any of that i think uh, that was avoided Yeah, you did a good job for the most part. I think in in it felt like more of the games you out prepared me. Yes. But maybe it was close. Like I I I was aware of the fact that you'd be preparing for me and I tried to play some things that would have been hard to predict. Yeah. I um, mean, uh I I prepared very well for you, but uh, it seems like uh getting a better position was not the the only thing right so so i think we should go over the games once uh, mm-hmm. some of them and would be very nice to get your views but but did you have a strategy like for me it was more like uh, to keep to keep the position simple uh, exchange queens whenever uh, possible you know not to give too many attacking chances that's what i read you as a player mm-hmm. Yeah, which I've kind of I've branded myself online as like a really aggressive player who likes gambits and dubious openings, but I I feel like I have kind of multiple personalities. Yes. I guess when it comes to chess, like in in classical chess, I actually like slower, more methodical positions, but I've kind of adapted this more aggressive entertaining style as a streamer. Like I want to make content, like make chess exciting and and make people intrigued with whatever openings i'm playing right um so i i usually try my best to adjust hmm. um i guess one part of my strategy uh of course which which uh, maybe played out in some way was to just get long games where we would get into time scramble situations where i i, I knew i i would have just more experience like moving quickly under time pressure um So that was part I like sometimes it's hard to do like you always have to play based on the position. Yeah, yeah. But uh but I didn't mind if we were like both getting low on time. Okay. Um no, especially these these drawn out end games. That was where uh, you were you were much better. So we'll go to the games. Are you having some issue uh with my video? So I have your video on the stream. I see your screen sharing. Yes, uh um to to see and the position can you take from there or is it it would be too small like you can crop out my face unfortunately the thing it kind of gets cut off but let me see if i can otherwise i can start I can i'll try to get another camera if it's possible yeah actually Yeah, this won't be so bad, I don't think. Okay, just a second if I can help mm-hmm. you and uh, uh, you don't want to uh, see my board, right? Uh So, do you want to go over the games just on screen share uh in chat space? Yes. Is that the easiest way? To... Okay. Um I mean, I have shared my screen, but we can okay. go over that uh, you can follow it there. Yeah, actually you can even sure. put my screen on your stream, uh, but it's uh, like You are there. I'm yeah, there. I Yeah, what I might do is share the board. Yeah. Um cuz I see my vid- my video is also shared but I don't want two of me. Uh <laughs> So Okay, you can you can figure that out to how, how to put it up. Maybe you can remove your normal video and then you just have the Zoom video there and myself but it looks kind of weird. Yeah, like uh the entire thing but I mean I actually don't mind what I have right now. Ah. Uh, so I I don't have your webcam but that's okay because it looks like it kind of froze up. Uh okay let me see if I can get another uh, of my webcam sure. working. Mm. But as long as we can both see the same board, uh, that'll be best. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so you can take my chessboard that I have uh-huh. uh, from the sh- screen I've shared. 
and there cool. we can we can make the moves here yeah, that would be nice okay let me get this going guys just a second uh, trying to fix this thing uh yeah no worries take your time um I'm, I'm pretty sure i have it set up where um i'll just have the board and it'll be pretty minimalist ah okay okay i'll just do this final attempt if you but then uh, if you're going to have the board uh, that I'm sharing, then I don't think my video will work on Zoom. I'll I'll then just do the screen share. Oh, I see. Yeah, because yeah, actually, can... that's that's completely fine as okay. as long as people can hear. So you can just um, I guess, go back to what you were doing of sharing the board. Right. Okay. So that's good. No. I think. Uh, yep, that should be fine. Uh, just fix the cropping. Awesome. Yeah, it's uh, very nice right now that uh, it's uh, early morning in India and it's quite mm. late in the night in the US and we are, we are analyzing this. So, so Eric, uh, first game, you know, uh, you started with E4. It was already a small surprise for me because I thought you would play the <laughs> London uh, a lot. Uh, because that's I, I, I'm, I'm aware that most people expect me to play the London, so I kind of have to uh, to, to play it in moderation. And yeah. it was an opening that I, I, I knew I was probably going to play at least once, but I didn't want to start with it. Hmm. Um, I wanted to get you thinking early. So, And also, I, I had like three, four things prepared for E4. One was E4, E5. Mm -hmm. But I, I was not sure. Like you have all these weird uh, kind of Panziani or uh, yeah. First Halloween of all, I, I saw this. Then I had uh, also prepared a bit against this. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> although although I I'm still not sure. This is quite a decent way to play yeah, with white. Yeah, Halloween can be surprisingly venomous. I mean, if you're prepared for it, there there's a few like completely like, fine lines. Like I I saw this one, uh, and and I was not sure. Like Knight G8 looks quite passive to me. So, so I mean, if you're prepared with the engine, you can play Knight G8, Bishop C4, and D5. Yes. Yeah, I saw uh, this. Is one of the I guess so-called refutations. Hmm. If you want to keep things simple. You can give back the piece instead yeah, of knight g8. I saw you can bishop, play bishop b4. b4, but but this gives white like a playable position. Maybe it's equal or even slightly better for white. That's what I I saw. Oh, it. interesting. Yeah, I've been under the impression that this is like close to equal, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's um it's still anyone's game. I was I was planning to do something like queen e7, uh, and mm. then give back like knight e5, like bishop e2, and. Day, oh, day, interesting. Something like this, which is, I think, already better for black. Yeah, I don't think I've encountered that one or even like ever studied that one. So I'll have to uh, have to check that line, maybe. Yeah, yeah, perhaps. But I was only going to play like the really dubious openings if uh, if, if I had were... like a, a very substantial lead. Mm. Um, I was I was actually considering playing Ponziani, but we didn't get another game with E4, E5. Ah, right, right. Because the line you chose was very interesting. We'll come to that game, but okay, sure. it started with uh, Karo Khan. Okay, so first game was Karo Khan, yeah. Yeah, and I was surprised uh, this. I, I had uh, seen a few things. One was Knight C3, D5, Knight F3. This was one. Yeah, I play that a lot. play a lot. And also this one is, is what... <laughs> <laughs> is what so like this one I, I was going to play at some point, but ah. I, I didn't get the chance because but, but you started playing these other lines. This line, I, I feel, has nothing, yeah, like in a way. Uh, Queen h4? Yeah, knight f6. f3? Ah, f3. I guess I, I could I was, play knight c3 first. Yeah, knight but, c3 um, and bish I, I was looking at like bishop g7. Uh, and if you take, I take, take a5. This is what I ah. had, I had seen. I think when I first started playing this, I didn't know exactly how to play it, um, but I, I would have played like f3, and I know it's objectively just not so great for white, but in blitz it can be fun because you open that file, you get this kingside attack, mm. um, 
and like get some early initiative. So it's uh yeah, it's it's like one of these these pet lines against the Carol Khan. Right. Right. Yeah, this could be uh, uh, something to study. But I mean, of course, if you have an engine, it would say that black is totally better here. Uh, because yeah, engine will say about minus yeah. one. So it basically says no compensation. But after white castles, there's a clear plan of d3 and bishop h6. Yeah. And if you ever play bishop f5, then there's h3, g4. So I, I knew some like middle game ideas from this position. So, so basically, it's good for three minutes or one minute. Perhaps for five, it could be slightly risky. Yeah, I don't think I would have played in the five minute portion. Correct. Um, but then, like, I only want to play it if it's a surprise. Right. And I guess uh, I wasn't fully aware if you would have been surprised by it, but <laughs> didn't get to find out. Yeah. So you went d3, d5. And okay, this was a surprise for me. I hadn't prepared. And mm. so d4, I knew uh, that there was this game that I had played once and that went ed5 and knight f6. So, mm -hmm. Which I think is a more popular line, if I'm not mistaken. True, true. So this bishop d3 was a surprising one. That's where I got a bit, uh, how do you say, thrown off because it was the first mm. game. Plus, I was not uh, prepared. So it was... Uh, Quite interesting. I I felt that I handled the opening okay. I mean, you also played yeah. it very well. Actually, so this line I was probably one of the last lines I looked at right before we started the match. Oh, was this bishop g four move? Because originally I, I didn't have bishop g four in my notes. Um, and then, uh, that, then like it was once we got it, it was kind of um just a position where I'm playing against the IQP. Right. But I was happy to at least get some something in my comfort zone. Yeah, I was pretty okay with this IQP because there's some threats on the king side, and G uh, if I mm -hmm. if I provoke G three, at least I have some play. Uh, and I I like this uh, until here, but here I think I I made a mistake, which was to to go knight f five. Uh yeah, because on d five d five foul but like in the game i i had another idea to take on each six yeah you saw that i didn't see it at all yeah uh-huh well i i was vaguely aware of it during the game but d5 just looked like a simpler pawn to capture mm. like just to try and simplify um so i guess i i had my choice of which pawn to take yeah because after queen g queen g2 i thought i have some compensation here uh mm -hmm. and uh i think there's one interesting moment uh yeah, which so you did have a, a engine win at some point in in this uh like after i played g4 i don't know if you you checked it uh after yes 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 i want to also ask uh sure can, can you can also like uh, do your viewers also guess some moves sometimes oh yeah definitely yeah. I, I i love to give them puzzles so Beautiful. this is black to move and find the best continuation yeah, yeah black to play here guys in the chat what should uh, black play here it's a uh, very <laughs> this is very interesting because i i ask uh, people in my streams uh, everyone who's watching it to guess the moves and this mm -hmm. time when i'm asking like there are more people because at your uh, in your stream also people will guess it so. oh yeah that's great <laughs> i have to keep an eye on both chats but i think at this point you were you were pretty low on time yeah. i was just kind of playing half trying to flag you <laughs> true true um but then after the game i remember checking this position with the engine seeing the engine move and not understanding it at all or not understanding why black was winning so it does take some digging it's there. actually a tough one uh especially mm -hmm. the first move you're right uh there are uh, people who have found it uh which is bishop takes h2 uh, queen d6 is what I played, looked natural, but after knight f1, I think I have nothing there. Yeah, all the squares are, are covered. Yeah, very nice move by you. Uh, but the main thing was to take on h2 with a check, king h2, check, king g1. And this was, I think, the key moment of this entire... Uh, uh, so once again, here is black to play. What would you play here? And I, I can tell you that uh, although this looks great, uh, 
to find it in my first game there seemed a bit uh, difficult because uh, I was more trying to just make sure that I am getting into Don't the flag. groove. Yeah, getting into sure. the groove, it was a little bit too much to calculate a lot at that point for me. Yeah, and to play bishop takes h2, you you basically have to see the next move and see kind of the forcing continuation. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I think it, it's very findable in like a classical slower game. Yeah, yeah, but definitely. In, of course. Yeah, when you have less than 30 seconds, it is tough. Yeah, everyone's saying rookie one, uh, but but I think after rookie one, rookie one, ninety one, this should be it just simplifies. Yeah, maybe queen e four or queen c eight check, queen f five. I think black, white is doing very well there. So the right move here is the very brilliant move, uh, which is knight takes f two. I, I see a, a few people in in both of both of the chats did manage to. Oh, you, you have both the videos open, yeah, because you have this three screen setup. I, I have three monitors, yeah. So <laughs> one, I have the board in front of me, I have my chat, and I have your chat. Wow, so. wow, this is amazing, <laughs> amazing. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a great setup you have, although I have only, like, I can't see your chat right now. But mm -hmm. yeah, so knight takes f2, and if uh, bishop f2, then there is... Queen D1. So it's very important that when you move your knight away from D3, there's this pin with the, the bishop being pinned to the rook. Right. Which I didn't spot immediately like when I first saw this uh, this line. And then, of, of course, uh, if king takes F2, then there's some fun, uh, fun checks. Yeah, I think queen F4, there is queen F3. So you go queen H2. Mm -hmm. And now if uh, king goes here, then this is already losing. You lose the rook at, at the very least. Uh, and if you go king, king f3, f3 is made in one. <laughs> there is queen uh, g3 made, sorry. And uh, queen g2 is met with rook e2. It's rook e2, yeah. And like during the game, of course, I didn't see any of this. But I I was always under the impression that I'll be safe because my queen can come back to g2. Mm. And this is like a little one line where queen g2 just doesn't work tactically. Yeah. So it's just uh, great. I mean, this was a very nice tactic, but once I did not spot this and you, you just, this is the toughest thing for me, you know, like when mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to get some tactics going, you defended them very, like very firmly uh, giving no inch there. And uh, then the time would run low. And yeah, yeah, it can be a very um, nice strategy for blitz is just like make sure everything's defended, right. prevent what the right. friend wants to do and try and keep putting the ball in their courts. Um, wait for the, the opportunity. Yeah, so that one was a very, was a very cool uh, victory for you. You started off with a win. Uh, I would have preferred uh, to, to start off better, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I had not really too many chances apart from that tactic, which was truly quite difficult, I think, for me to find. So, um, yeah, moving on to the second game, uh, it was white for me uh, in this one. So let me get that on the screen. And this time, uh, okay, let's, let's keep black there. Knight f3. Uh, d5, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, e6. So I was I was certain that you would go for these setups with uh, mm -hmm. uh, just classical knight f6, bishop e7 castles. So I think my my repertoire with white worked out okay uh, in the match. And this this move order was the line I was most expecting. Mm. Um, and planning, of course, to go for this like D four. Yes, this was a, this was I I wasn't expecting this because mm -hmm. um, castles is what you play a lot. Castles B three and then A five is probably what you checked. Yes, this is one thing which yeah. I checked, uh, and then I was planning to go a uh, knight C three here, mm. uh, which you have some games, uh, and also it's an interesting line with D four knight B five. So this is something... Yeah, I feel like when I've played this in the past, I just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but A5 is like a cool looking idea just it, to storm. But I have I tried to analyze it a lot and I figured mm -hmm. that it's uh, not so simple. Like uh, Black always has... There are these games by top players as well. 
So knight mm. c6 is one move and also c5 giving up this b5 square to the knight. And it, it's an interesting way to play. I think it's a very viable opening. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's very kind of dynamic and balanced position. It's the type of thing like you want experience studying before you go into in a serious match. Um, yeah, exactly. So uh, here, when you went d4, uh, I was I was like, yeah, this is not something that I have worked for deeply. And also these structures are not so easy for, uh, I mean, you, you need to like the Benoni structures. So d3, knight c6, bishop g5. I didn't like this move particularly. I thought uh, you, are, you are behind in development and I should have some advantage mm. here. So knight d7 was part of my preparation ah. in a different line. I, I will say bishop g5 was the first move out of my preparation. Okay. I, I was more prepared for rook e1. And then knight d7 is the main move. Right, right. Stopping knight e5, basically. Uh, Stopping knight e5, preparing pawn e5. And it's uh, like, then then black can kind of get the central bind. Mm, mm. So when you play bishop g5, I kind of just try to do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I guess in this seems... game, you didn't punish me. But then in a later game, you you really punished me. Yeah, that, that one. But here also, like, I think knight a3 is a better way to put the knight because mm -hmm. I go knight c2 with the idea of b4, also attack d4 and rook e1. So, you know, like, for example, I, I don't think you are in time to get everything like knight c2 uh, with rook e1 coming and then knight d4 uh, threats. I, I don't know. Maybe yeah, it's yeah, it's it's annoying when like king is still in the center. Ah, uh, and also sorry, uh, maybe knight e5, knight b5 might be strong also, like threatening this. And mm. perhaps uh, and yeah, I I probably have to castle there and and then rook e1. Pray that the center doesn't collapse. Yeah, this is a threat queen. now. And also queen c5 this, looks wrong. This could be a big pro problem, you know, getting the knight to d5 would be too much. Yeah, know. maybe queen queen d8 also looks wrong, but maybe that's what I have to do. Yeah. But then knight, I, I mean, at the very least, I can... You have knight d6 and yeah. get the bishop, and then your light sword bishop will thrive. Yeah, exactly. So... Yeah, so yeah it's honestly eight... the type of structure I I wasn't so experienced in, but I only I, I looked at like briefly before the match. Hmm, hmm. Yeah, so knight d2 castles rook e1 e5. Here I calculated for a long time this stuff. Mm. Uh, knight e5 f4, and somehow I was just not like ready to do something like this. You know, I I don't know. Uh, maybe it's equal like something like this but i uh, i i just decided to play it a little safe a3 yeah it, it's a big positional transformation I, I think the key there is to either go for it like relatively quickly this or one, decide right? it's not worth taking your time and go for something exactly, else exactly exactly yeah which um, is i took the time and i didn't play it as well so <laughs> that, mm -hmm. that already uh, was not great uh, 94 f6 i wanted to provoke f5 and go back but you didn't play it uh, because that weakens e5 a bit. Sure. Yeah, I have to be careful advancing my pawns too far. Yeah, and then this, when I got c5, I was very happy. Uh, like, because generally you don't get this. Now my knight will come here. Uh, you pushed knight here and mm -hmm. you took here. Uh, and I knew that something is, I have compensation here, but I didn't know how to make it work somehow. Yeah, I... Honestly, when I went for this line, I didn't see anything clear cut for you. So I, I didn't want to spend my time like looking for ideas for you, even though it looks sketchy for me. Yeah. I just went for it. And um, yeah, I'm, I didn't check if you had any any clear improvements here. Yes, I should take on C5. I, I didn't do that in the game. I took on C8. Ah, okay. But I take on C5. Queen d6, and here is a key move, actually. Maybe you and also the chat can try to guess. So, white to play. What do you play here? So, e5 is obviously a target. 
yeah this and i mean once you see this it's quite possible often that you can just give this up because the rook is hanging and this is this is defended for now mm -hmm. like i i did see rook e5 in the game but it didn't seem enough compensation uh yeah, you always want to consider like rook e5 or rook c6. I mean, maybe a, a move just like queen queen c2 or queen c1, like yes, keeping the pressure. Absolutely. This two moves or even rook b5 for that matter. And mm -hmm. uh, it's better for white somehow. The thing is, uh, this pawn is hanging here. And uh -huh. uh, if you play something like rook e8, then I think uh, knight g5 with the idea of, oops, sorry bishop d5 and it's very strong i mean uh white is somehow oh. having almost a decisive advantage here oh that's pretty incredible actually yeah. i guess like you're attacking me from so many directions and my pieces are just not not in the best shape yeah they're undeveloped i mean mainly this bishop and the uh, rook so mm -hmm. and there's too many targets between e5 v7 the king yeah so and also kind of like also the dream here there's one. also another nice move which is knight d2 uh, and this is also something which uh, comes up when you play c5 you can put the knight here and somehow i mean knight g5 is stronger but knight d2 also works with compensation mm -hmm. Uh, Rohit Atalia sent a super chat saying good morning Sagar and Eric Guru Dakshina was great to watch you guys play each other well fought Sagar yeah thank you Rohit so kind of you so uh, knight c8 and here once again you know uh, this is I think what, what you do the best uh, was just not give me any chance here like queen d6 was very powerful mm -hmm. knight a7 and then, of course, here I, I just blundered and you won a piece. So, very, very. Yeah, I, I think, at, at, and towards the end, you were you were quite low on time. Yes, very low. Um. So it started 2 nil, and I was just, uh, you know, uh, I was just uh, hoping that it won't be a complete whitewash there. Complete adoption. Yeah. <laughs> but... And then I, I was looking forward to going three three and zero, oh, and then this next game was a a roller coaster. Yeah. Let let me bring that up on the screen. So uh, once I saw that you have something prepared for the Karukan, uh, I don't know if you would have repeated uh, that same D three system here. If I played I'm actually not sure either. Um, I probably would have just because I like the position I got. Uh, I was also prepared if you were to deviate in some of the other lines. Um, I had some preparation to fall back on. Hmm. So, but maybe at some point I would have played this uh, this hillbilly bishop c4 line. Ah, yes, this would have been interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. But I I decided that I'll go for d6 uh, because. And, and this is something you prepared or this is just over the board? Um, this is something I I didn't prepare specifically for you, but maybe about a year or two ago, I was having a hard time falling asleep. And then randomly it came to mind, oh, I don't have to play d4 against the Pirates so early. I can play bishop c4. And just to explain like the kind of the... Uh, the reason for bishop c4 imagine on move one instead of d6 black plays g6 okay then then the line i like to play is d4 bishop g7 knight f3 d6 so the typical like modern a lot of players will play this bishop c4 knight f6 and then queen e2 and this is a pleasant line as white well against the modern to play e5 and uh it's a bit more kind of direct and I've, I, I enjoy the positions I get from this. Hmm. The thing is in the Pirates after, so if you go back and, and show D6 on move one, if white plays D4, there's knight F6. I don't know if you were planning to play this or maybe yes. go for E5. Okay. No, no, knight F6. And I gotcha. think you have to commit knight C3. And then I have to commit to some move to defend the pawn. So the reason to play bishop c4 first is to 
basically trying to transpose into uh-huh. this modern line without committing to knight c3. Right. So um, so here you would prefer not to put your knight on c3 very soon. Uh, first go for e5 breaks. Yeah. So one of the main lines is castling and then e5 and the, the knight is on... Um, Knight gets kicked around, yeah. like takes, 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 takes knight d5. And then h3 is a nice move, preventing bishop g4. And then I, I very quickly go for casting in rook d1. And this is, um, yeah, this is kind of my repertoire against the modern. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so d6, bishop c4, knight f6, queen e2. And here I, uh, I think I was. So you play e5 here. Yeah. Um, against a lot of players who play the pirates like g6 is probably the most logical move and then i I usually can transpose into the line that i like to get right okay so it's just kind of a move order trick um now i was watching so like i i rewatched some of the commentary because a lot of people were were giving commentary on this match Hmm. i think that the main commentator is like uh, nemo and robert hess were a, a bit confused about this but also intrigued um and at some point hikaru was asked about this line and he was saying that instead of e5 uh c5 is probably the most principled move oh. and you just get some better sis- version of sicilian um but of course maybe you're not as familiar in like sicilian structures no i mean it could be uh, a good idea i just thought that e5 is uh with with the queen here uh seems good and at the same true. time also uh uh, following my strategy, I mean, whenever I got a solid position, I was very happy uh, in general. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, e e five is also very respectable. But after f four, it's it's kind of unexplored territory. Absolutely. Like I moved, I I knew this move existed, but I didn't have much specific preparation. And uh, well, I'm threatening knight d four, so you stop. Yeah, there. I had to play c three. Castles, castles, and I I like the how this opening went for me. Uh, here, yeah, d5 is very thematic. Yeah, check and uh, well, it's <laughs> it's one of those cases. It's unfortunate. Where like the most natural move is just a blunder for you. It's a huge blunder, and and I uh-huh. think uh, this is where uh, you were very quick to spot this. I mean, this is fantastic, amazing. Uh, check, king f8 takes here, but uh, you know you had a better move here. Yeah, I'm aware knight g5 is uh, is apparently... So I, I considered knight g5, uh-huh. and then I just didn't want to calculate... um, Because you have like various moves to defend. I, I want to ask the viewers, uh, after queen e7, what's the winning move for white here? It's yeah, a there's very... a really cool move, and I, I did not spot this line. This is this is so basically knight g5 threatens a checkmate here, so I stop it with queen e7, and now white has a powerful move here. Mm-hmm. What what is the move that? Yeah, stoner blocks very nice. Yeah, this is the the right move here. Um, Bishop d6, Eric. This is beautiful. Yeah, I think they showed this on the chess.com broadcast. Ah, really? uh, Yeah, it's incredible. It creates like two different pins. Uh, The knight is pinned to the king. The queen is pinned to the king. And there's a maiden one threat. This is beautiful because if you take here, queen f7 is mate. And the most mm. beautiful part is after this knight h7 is is a checkmate. That's really beautiful, <laughs> mate. Yeah. This with the rook and the queen, it's very pretty, very pretty. Yeah. When I got to this moment, like debating between knight g5 and taking the bishop, I just I, I knew I didn't want to take so much time, so I played the simpler option. But that kind of came back to to bite me. Like sometimes when you have a good position, you should take that extra energy to to keep kind of pounding away and, and show no mercy and then later i let you off the hook yeah here the king g8 and uh, i was slightly happy that uh, i had calculated that after knight f7 king g8 you have no mm-hmm. real uh, good discovered checks yeah it was pretty incredible here like i, I took time because it seems 
it seems unfair that the knight can't do so much damage. Um, but of course, I I think I did miss this, uh, this e5 idea. I hear that is mistaken. e5. I think so. And then the problem for you no, is... I'm... Oh, bishop e6? That's what I was oh, bishop thinking. e6 is interesting. Because if you take here, uh, maybe queen f7? You can also take on c4 and hit the rook on ah, f1. Ah, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Sorry. Take, uh, and this is, I think, winning, you know? I take and take this. Yeah, for some reason, I thought the commentators were saying e5 is winning, but... No, but uh, this, is, this is bishop e6, I think, is uh, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's probably... Maybe somewhere else they must have mentioned. Here, e5, maybe? Oh, e5 here, yeah. Maybe here, yeah, here. Correct. I delay knight f7. True. And then if your knight moves from f6, then I can I can check and win your bishop. Like, for... Oh, okay, that way. So if I go knight d7... Then check, king g8, knight at 6, check, and then win this. Oh, nice. Yes. Nice. And it's important it's double check so you don't have bishop d6. Right. Six. Beautiful. Okay, got it. e5, I, I did not consider. And I think you also missed it. And after yeah. knight d2, we reach this position where maybe it's around equal because you have a pawn, but I have activity. Uh, but I was, I was just... Happy to. I think g5 was a very nice practical move. I was expecting you just to win back the pawn with rook e3. Yeah. Um, but the g5 put me under more pressure, and I was already low on time. And you and know, I this, couldn't figure out what to do. This game should have given me a cue here that uh, knights are better than bishops. You know, because uh, <laughs> because this is the I think the only end game where I had a knight and you had a bishop. And and I. Oh, that's it. interesting. Uh, yeah, especially once you got your knight to f3, that was. Very painful for me. Yes, knight f3 threatening a checkmate here. Uh, and then bishop g3, h5, uh, took the pawn. And this is very difficult, I think, in with few seconds to defend. Although I, I yes. blundered here with g3. Uh, yeah, I put my bishop far away, hoping you'd forget about it. Right, right. Uh, and you took it, and then suddenly you blundered here. Yeah. I, I don't remember if this was like a mouse slip or if I just panicked because hmm. uh, I had, I think, less than two seconds left. Um, like rook b3 or rook d3, of course, I think yeah, is a, should be drawn. the way to fight. Yes. But it's still very unpleasant in time pressure and I always have to be... Actually, rook d3 loses a rook to rook b1 uh, and, and knight e1. And yes, this is losing. Yeah. So it's not easy. Like there's so many ways to go wrong. Yeah, this is with the knight, as you rightly pointed out, very tricky. And it's so good. I think this this win uh, did give me some some confidence because. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, first yeah, you of fought all, back your way from a a bad position. Yeah, exactly. So this uh, ended, uh, and the score was then two one, and mm -hmm. then we moved to game number four. And this was, I think, uh, a very important one, just to say. Uh, this is where you revealed your uh, your very specific opening preparation. Uh, this is where I, you know, uh, that's why I felt that my prep with white was good. Because if you played uh, some, like, you already surprised me with this D4 line in the first, mm -hmm. second uh, game. And so... I had a lot of things to fall back on, mm -hmm. like this one with knight f3, d5, uh, g3, knight f6, d4, e6, c4, d takes c4, and uh, yeah, this d4 move basically. And and later sure. on, you played b5, which was nice. Which yeah, eventually I I realized I could just avoid the this these c4 lines entirely. Yeah. So c4 takes bishop g2, check, bishop d2, and yeah, a3. And this was, I felt, uh, I had seen a couple of your games here, and I felt mm -hmm. that white has a risk-free edge. Yep. Yeah, and this is a type of line, it's more enjoyable to play as black when you're surprising the opponent. Because it, it's one of these much lesser common lines to play against a Catalan. 
but when white's really well prepared it does have some drawbacks i think this is this is one of the the most challenging lines um and i i, I knew it existed and i just had to accept maybe a, a slightly worse position um but i i think i repeated this like one or two more times and then decided to to not repeat it yeah 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 no we had a couple of more games by the way in the chat we have i am sarwanan uh, who's mm -hmm. suggesting instead of f4 white should have gone rook a1 d1 d7 uh which position I, not here i think was f4 still part of your preparation yeah, yeah. f4 was preparation mm -hmm. there was this game with it versus moranda this is what i had based oh. it on and with it, I mean, played this move f4. All the engines used to suggest knight c4 here. Uh, but with it, played f4. Uh, and then after rook b8, I went queen d3, um, which is fine. Bishop b5. Mm -hmm. and, but here, I should go rook fd1, uh, which I did in the next game with queen d2 uh, and rook fd1. Uh, is this is one of the lines you had mentioned? Uh, Amruta yes. helped you with, right? So no. Okay. So what was happening is Amruta was sitting in like uh, that joining room, and she mm -hmm. was looking at the games and trying to figure out where I can improve during the break. And so after gotcha. when the, when it was the break, I would go to her and ask her what is better. And this is where uh, she told me F4 is not so great because she didn't know my prep. So I said, no, that is oh. all preparation. Uh, and then I we checked with the engine that queen D2 is an improvement. Uh, gotcha. But even this, I later found out rook F D1 is the correct way to play. Because in the game, I was afraid that uh, you can win this pawn. But after uh, rook C7, you have so much activity. Yeah, it's very good for white. So... Yeah, yeah, it's very nice preparation. Thank you. Because I, I was under the impression like there's some drawing line like you can repeat with knight c4 uh, instead of f4, but um, of course white can play for more. Yes, yes. I mean, if you even if you check this with engines, uh, they will give a very risk-free edge. And here mm -hmm. also, I felt like this is also slightly better for white. Rook f d1, rook d7. I, I think here you had missed knight e5 perhaps because you, you stopped a bit. Well, I, I took some time. For some reason, I thought I was losing a piece. It took me yes. a few moments to spot rook d6 because okay. I was freaking out. Oh, rook e7, e4. Oh, no. But rook d6 uh, <laughs> oh, no, keeps my me knife. alive. <laughs> I, I saw one of your video where you do this. Oh, no, my queen. <laughs> well, I tried to do it to you in, in one of the later games. Uh, even like oh, I tried to yes, fake a uh, yes. surprise reaction. <laughs> that one, I I couldn't see your video. Uh, did you keep the oh, okay. video on while playing? No, I I I had your video closed. Ah, yeah, exactly. So it was more for like the audience, um, <laughs> okay. just uh, doing some. Show. Eric, the showman, <laughs> even during the the match, yeah. <laughs> so rook d six, and here, uh, I think uh, e four is the most natural way to continue. But there is a good move for white here. I think after the, um, like I analyzed it later. So if you mm -hmm. can find it, guys, in the chat, uh, white to play. Oh, I was curious. I don't know if this is a move, but uh, I was curious about bishop takes d5. Yeah, but if you can just get an IQP position. Yes, Bishop. T I also like from the what we have learned now from what you said, knights are better than bishops, so could be a mm -hmm. good idea to do that. But there's a, I think e d five and maybe it's playable because f six comes next. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's no reason to do it. Yeah. So soon because you have so much pressure. But this is, I think, a very, very strong move here and maybe helps. Uh, I, I think this is something which I have to learn to make better use of the bishop. Ah, uh, uh, f5. f5. I, yeah, I caught some of the commentary with Nemo. Nemo was suggesting this and then, then Robert was impressed because it's, um, yeah, it's a really nice kind of destabilizing move. Yeah, and because after fe6, you will have to take with the f pawn and then my knight can sit here forever. Uh, and you can never kick it out. Yeah, and we should point out I can't take on f5 because of these back rank tactics. Uh, rook on d8 is, ends up being overworked. Right. 
just checkmate here. So uh, e4, knight b6, and here uh, I was happy that I found knight f7 and bishop e2, which were, I think, for me, uh, difficult moves under time pressure. But uh, mm -hmm. this is where I think uh, I, I messed it up all. Uh, so we defend. Right, well. this knight d8 move. Yeah, knight d8, instead of this knight d6, I was not happy because of uh, bishop c6. But it mm -hmm. seems like after king f2, king f8, king e3, king e7, e5, it's not mm. so easy for um, for black. This entry. That's a very nice construction because then your your king will eventually support the e pawn, and it's yes. very hard to remove your knight. And you fix my pawn on e6. Yeah. So in in a way, this could have been a tougher uh, end game for you. But after knight d8, bishop c8. Mm -hmm. Uh, here I, I had the only chance here to save myself. Like once I played a king f2, I think you are you are better. Uh, Knight gets uh, gets stuck. Yes. So here. Ah, was there bishop g4? Exactly, bishop g4, and I think uh, you lose this pawn uh, on e6. I was vaguely aware of this move. And the thing is, if you go here, I have this one. Uh, wow oh that's actually nice oh but i win e oh i win e4 but i lose a6 in the end wow yes but okay this position is still not 100 percent clear but uh at least white is in no risk yeah sure yeah bishop g4 is a very nice move yeah so, oh what if uh what if f5 though but f5 i take uh, sorry, take... yeah, one second. F5. Yeah, yeah the main idea is to take take and bishop f3 and then uh and b7 is hanging yeah, put pressure here. I see. So, oh, but then. But you can't go uh, knight, knight c4, c4 yeah? is not, bishop d5 not quick enough. check. In, in yeah. This. Yeah, sometimes this is why like it's it's helpful to like conserve a, a bit of time for the end game exactly. just to find like the moves in these critical moments. I saw one recurring theme in this entire match, at least for myself, is I couldn't make mm -hmm. use of the bishops very well. Like, mm. although I had the, I had, so for example, in this game as well, after take, take here, I felt this is lost, this end game. I mean, I don't know. I mean, with very few seconds, of course, uh, objectively, this is equal. The main mm. reason being that I need to, uh, it's a cool move by, by the way, here, this, uh, first of all, uh, King D3. And if you go Knight B6. I have to notice that these are weak pawns and perhaps go from here and attack them. Get counterplay, definitely. And somehow, if you if you look at this game and also next one, I was just playing with my bishop, like doing nothing. You see here, bishop f1. And of course, you, you were defending beautifully, like you're blocking bishop b7 and then knight c3, very cool. Yeah, I, maybe I was playing overly safely, but at this point, it's just about playing quick moves and not conceding anything. Yes, and and uh, yeah, you won this game uh, also, and th this was where you had like ah uh, the pre move sequence, yeah. Ah, uh, ah, you did this all pre moves, huh? Yeah, yeah, I, I pre moved the last, I guess, three moves, and then just did some stretch. So it was, it was nice. <laughs> Oh, nice. Very cool. Very cool. So, okay. Yeah. This was, uh, I think by now you had a 3 1 lead in the match. Uh, so, this is 3 1. I was feeling good. And then. And then the next game was. This once next again. game. I, and this one was, I think, uh, shook me because e4, e5, mm -hmm. knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. I never expected you which to I do very this. rarely play yes. yeah I, I get like a lot of people uh, maybe some people like request it now and again it's like one of the most common openings in chess uh, but I, I have like all my favorite kind of pet lines between Halloween Gambit and Ponziani um, sometimes Danish Gambit that the Spanish gets overlooked I was actually studying Ponziani and uh, I had like some some ideas there oh not this sorry mm. queen f4 and i was planning to play f6 mm -hmm. uh, and then bishop b5 and knight g7 yeah uh, we can we can see how my preparation would have fared i would have uh, taken on d5 and castled 
and I was planning to play e4. Oh, e4. So against e4, I would play c4. Ah, c4, not knight d4, huh? No. Because c4 is maybe the engine move, from what I remember. Oh. I, I spent a lot of time analyzing knight d4. Mm. And then bishop d7. And I think black is doing well here. Yeah, the, these positions tend to objectively be a, a little bit better for black. But there's some complications. Like the, the, the idea with c4 is actually quite cool. Is after queen d6. Yes, I would have done To play this. c5. Ah, c5. Unleashing the queen. So I'm hitting e4 with my queen. And if of I course, take... okay, you, you'll take. And then d4 is, uh, is a cool move. And it just gets really crazy. I don't remember what happens after this, but if I take here, then it's uh, like Bishop E three. I like think Bishop E three, Rook D one, yeah, Rook E one maybe. Get some Very cool. initiative with the open center. C four, Queen D six. Maybe I shouldn't touch this pawn, right? Queen D five, perhaps. Okay. But then Knight C three. Ah, yeah, Knight C three. Queen D five is Knight C three. <laughs> So this is objectively I must take, and then I have to face this. Mm -hmm. And this would have been quite, quite. Uh... Yeah, maybe I, I should have had my chance to play Ponziani like one game. Yeah, this would have been nice because I really spent. Uh, I thought you will go knight d4, and there I was prepared. Sure. But you know the thing is, like for example, this is what Adiban also said to me that you know it's not only about these traps. Like for example, the Stafford Gambit. Uh, sorry, knight f6. Uh, knight e5, knight c6, takes, takes, mm -hmm. uh, d3, bishop c5, bishop e2, right? Oh, uh, I was disappointed you didn't play e4 any game. I was ready to play a Stafford. <laughs> yes, but I would have been very happy if you played the Stafford, right? I mean... Uh, I would have been happy too. <laughs> <laughs> but how, We could how, have all been how, happy. How can uh, Stafford, uh, you know, with someone who's prepared work... So I saw, I saw briefly this, I guess the one opening you guys did discuss on stream was this approach like in Ponziani and I would have been happy to go into it. I would have played H5 here. Yeah. And, and the thing is H5, um, so, I mean, maybe you would be well prepared. Yes. Um, yes. C3, would, uh, no, so C3, and, uh, C3, mm -hmm. yes. And this is what I was looking Knight G4, right? Yep. Uh, D4. Queen h4. G3. Queen goes back. Yes, f6. And now uh, f3 and h4. h4. Oh, so if, if you prepared beyond this, maybe I would have been in trouble. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I saw everything. Like, for example, here, uh, rook g1 is a move. Uh, so rook g1 is one move. But even if you play fg, hg, mm -hmm. um, I think, how does this go? Uh Or maybe you start with rook g1, there's knight h2. Are you saying you, like, you take the knight and I then I saw take one on video. Or... I don't know who was this. There was this player, some Schrantz or something. Uh, oh, Jonathan Schrantz. Jonathan yeah, Schrantz. The, the magical. He he drew Stockfish from uh, from the position after h4. Yes. And, and this is what Adiban showed me. And he said that it's not only about these traps. Like computer will give plus three or plus four, but mm -hmm. there, there's some very deep, deep prep. Like for example, in that case where he went, like gave up this piece, played bishop e6. I mean, it was crazy, this entire line. I, I, can, I can show the line real quick just uh, to have it on the board. Yeah. So the line after h4 is rook g1. Rook g1, yeah. Uh, and then takes, takes on g3. Uh-huh. And then rook h2. Yeah. Take on c5. And then take on c5. Bishop e6. Uh, and then queen d4. This, this, these are all like stockfish moves from white, basically. Yeah. And then incredible move. And then once you play those moves, the evaluation will start going down for white. It's, is bishop c4. It's unbelievable. Like yeah. so, so that's the point. Yeah, like it's not about just preparation. Uh, I mean, you you see it like this is the same thing which you showed in Ponziani right now, which is like c4, queen d6, c5, takes d4. So you know more than just the trap. You know, you know like how it goes because you have played it so many times. 
Right. So it's not just um, the first few moves. You need to know it thoroughly. Well, a big part also with with I think Jonathan's preparation, and I've I've been doing this too, is you analyze not just with Stockfish but with Leela, and Leela will sometimes just disagree completely with Stockfish, hmm. and those situations are really interesting where Leela will have a better sense of like long term initiative, and there's situations where Stockfish will say like plus four, but it's actually like close to equal or just better for for the other side. Yeah. So, so the main point here is that after bishop c4, I think queen f3. Uh, 95. I've, uh, or 95, 95? Yeah. Actually, here, uh, queen f3 looks right. I'm not sure, but, but uh, queen c4 looks like the most natural. And then, okay, yeah, queen c4 is 95. 95. And... Yeah, this and... and the issue becomes there's these sacrifices on e2 followed by rook, like some rook d8 moves. Um, Queen D. It's like it's still playable in many of these lines, but it gets it can get very murky. Like rookie yeah, two, queen f three, queen f three, and rook d eight, or rook maybe D8. first rook d eight. I don't know. Uh, then queen e three. Check. So we want to. And knight d three. I, I guess this is the yeah. level of prep that uh, you guys have in the Stafford. Yeah, and like it's not the most practical preparation because not too many people <laughs> will go for it, but it, it can be fun to analyze because there's so many like beautiful variations. And like one, one of the things with Stafford, even if it's objectively bad, most players won't be prepared so deeply. And if yeah. you're well prepared, you can blitz out the first 15, even 20 moves in some cases, and then just get a huge time advantage from early on. Right. Um, so what, what's it? Uh, it's like Stafford is a religion. Yeah, that's what you say. Ah, uh, yeah, that was kind of a, an offhand joke, but maybe nice, nice. there's some element of truth to that. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Okay, so uh, I went knight c6, and the the biggest surprise was that you played this move d4, which I mm. uh, like. I might have prepared at some point, but I didn't have like before the game. Uh, so gotcha. you might yeah, I've I've played this in classical tournament chess, which maybe you didn't check. Maybe I you was only checking, checked my online games. I checked a bit of classical, but not this deep. Like I was just seeing what sure. your style. And then you, for the opening, I, I based it on uh, your online games. Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, okay, it would have I, been impressive if you found my, my games from this line. I, um, I but, but okay, Bishop G4 is well known to be like, Kind of equalizing after the game i realized that you should take take mm -hmm. knight a5 bishop c2 and c2. so it, it was funny uh i i have a small story to share yeah. from exactly this line mm -hmm. so af right after our match um i decided to live stream title tuesday on chess.com mm -hmm. um because i couldn't get like enough chess and then in one of the games in title tuesday I went into this variation and I played through all of my preparation. It was, I think, 17 moves deep. Okay. And my opponent walked straight into like a, a nice trap. Um, and it, it emerges from uh, what you just showed. So he takes d4. So he takes d4. And it was nice because the whole game, I just didn't really have to think at least the first uh, opening moves. So in this position, um, not bishop c2, but knight bd2. Uh-huh. Okay. I mean, I would take uh, this. Allowing knight takes b3. Yeah. So black gets the bishop here, a b3, c5. And then the idea here is to play h3. Okay. Bishop, bishop h5, h5, g4. Okay. Bishop, bishop g6. g6. Now, very, uh, very nice move. And I've, I found this at some point uh, a few years ago with the engine is knight h4. Um, and my opponent in Title Tuesday walked right into this, very quickly took on e4 with the bishop. The e4 pawn can't be taken here. Yeah, um, I, I would uh, guess I would also do it because bishop mm -hmm. knight e4, knight e4, h4 is also hanging. I mean, it's just so a pawn. White to move, find the simple tactic to win a piece. Okay. Simple tactic. 
Oops. And so it's white to move here uh, and oh 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 this is very cool this is very cool actually somehow it's not easy to spot it instantly right because it's uh -huh. not a common one yeah it's a slightly, it's slightly unusual, unusual i guess pattern your knights on h4 but it it just it's it is like a basic removal of the guard you want to win the bishop and you want to remove the knight from f6 so g5 so, beautiful yeah, yeah a, lot a lot of people, of people in both chats yeah. finding it yeah. By the way, Siddharth Ranadev has sent a super chat saying, good morning, Sagar Bhai. Hello from Chicago, Eric. Oh, from Chicago. Nice. Where, where yeah, do I'm, you uh, live? I'm from Chicago. Oh, you live I'm in currently, Chicago? I'm currently living in St. Louis. Okay. But I grew up uh, in the Chicago suburbs. Nice. Nice. So not too far away. Great. Okay. So uh, G5 is the winning move. Ah, very cool. Yeah. So here... So here, black has to do something. You Maybe could take CD4. on d4. You can play rook e8. But then, like, white's going to follow through with knight f5 very soon. Um, and it's a playable position. Nice, nice. So Got some kingside play. Th this is, this is ty typical Eric. Yeah, like everyone tells you in the opening, don't give up this bishop. This is your mm -hmm. Rai Lopez bishop. Uh, but he's like, okay, I don't mind. I, guess. I mean, there's some like deeper, yeah. Uh, so, a lot of it can be based on like unusual moves. Correct. I'll just try and make work with the engine. Is this something from before you used to do, or it's just specific to streaming? This uh, trying to find unusual and some nice traps and stuff like that. Uh th this I I enjoy well before streaming. Um, I mean, I grew up using chess base, and when I would play in tournaments, when I know my opponent ahead of time. Mm. and can then look up their games then I'll, I'll i'll try and find their games in jazz base and use the engine use databases to to come up with with new things right. um so yeah I, i've been using chess base since i was probably like nine years old nice so cool uh and so i tried to follow up the normal way which is not the the best way to play rook mm -hmm. e8 Bishop F8. The, it's, the it's thing pretty... is, I didn't know what to do against Rook E8. It was like out of my preparation. Yeah, yeah. So... I, I knew that. Like, I knew that uh, this is a bad move when you started thinking uh, over uh -huh. here. So, I mean, not bad, but it might not be the main line. So, uh, yeah, which like sometimes you want to actually go for, like play a, a move that's out of my book. And then I was just, you hoping, got the fine position. I was just hoping that there's no Bishop F7 here. <laughs> Because yeah, I wanted to make bishop f7, like, queen b3, but... There's always d5. Yeah, d5, and I don't think it quite, quite works for white. Yeah. So, uh, knight d2, uh, bishop f8, h3. And here I, I just played d5, uh, because generally if you get d5 in such structures, it's, it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. But you played very well. Like g4, excellent move. Uh, I was thinking, should I take, but I didn't, I didn't find anything here after ED and uh, somehow Bishop E4 may come next if I take. Right. E. There's enough defenders on the, the king side. Yeah. And so I, I took here, takes, takes, and this is where uh, E5, I thought that black should be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but I found this later and this is very cool that after knight E4, D4. Uh, oh, this position! I I I missed an opportunity. I checked this yes, game too. Yes, it's a it's a very nice one. I thought black should be fine because of two mm -hmm. reasons. One is that you have slight weaknesses here. My queen is coming to h4, uh, but this is a very nice move here for white. Right, and I I don't know if I even considered this move. I think I was just focused on a single idea and, and didn't even like consider my other options but it's it's a type of move like once you once you see as an option it makes a ton of sense of like why it can be so good yeah yeah i i think here guys if you can find the move this is very nice in fact uh, eric i i think that i would have gone for this like 
every time and but now that i see mm -hmm. this white move i realize that my strategy may be wrong you know like to go for this, this position sure and i don't know if there is a, a better improvement after rookie eight but um yeah, maybe you would go for like the knight a5 line. Yes, I will go for knight a5 next time. Ed4 is ed4. So uh, I'm not seeing anyone in my chats finding the move. A lot of people actually, I think, suggesting the move that, that you I played. Yes. played. Yeah, this is not an easy move, guys. Yes, script and it's yeah, it's like right. one of these positional exercises. So it's it's not tactics like some people I see wanting to take on e4, but it's way more just about getting the optimal piece placement, targeting some weakness. So in the game, Eric played f4. And after ef3, bishop g6, hg6, and queen f3, I think black is doing fine. I mean, because mm -hmm. one bishop is exchanged. But uh, the real cool move is bishop f4. Uh, and the idea is that if queen h4, you can go king g2, and then bishop g3, kick the queen out. At the same time, this is a weakness now, and also queen d5 can always be met with bishop b3 pushing the pawn to d5, and white has a very strong position. Yeah, and for some reason, I don't think I was fully aware that I have this bishop b3 resource against queen d5. And not only that, but like after bishop b3, I can potentially get my pawn to d5. Yes, with, with uh, like both your bishops supporting the pawns, it's... And the pawns just control so much space. The queen yeah. can come to d4. My rook comes to c1. And it's just a dream position. And black is so passive. Got it. Very nice. So this uh, would have been very good. But after f4, I think uh, this game uh, it was one of the rare ones which reached a logical conclusion. Like It was our only draw of the match, actually. Really? I think so. Oh, only because we we ended at each having like 0. 0.5 right 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 yeah yeah only draw and i i think uh this was an equal position and it ended in a draw so mm -hmm. so good uh it was a good game i would say uh eric had some chances but in the end it was drawn um just putting this in yeah, I, I think this was maybe the cleanest game like the, my one missed chance was uh was this bishop f4 move? Yes, yes. And then I there guess were no maybe blunders you could have in the opening. Such in that game. That's true. Yeah, I feel like all the other games had some some more glaring blunders. Right. And this one was now improving uh, on the, the. There was a short break after this, mm. and then uh, I improved on uh, the previous analysis. Knight e5, queen d6, f4, and queen d2. Rook f d1 and then takes, takes, and now I'm okay with bishop e2 because of rook c7. It's the same line that we played in the previous game. Uh, mm -hmm. Rook d1, I think, is not good. Uh, just king f2 or bishop f3, and white has long term pressure here. Like with g4, g4. Yeah, it's a bit awkward for black. Like you're controlling both, both the files. fully open files. And my pieces are just not harmonizing. My rook's tied down. Um, will you give up this opening, or you have uh, like you will try to find some improvement here? Because it seems like White has this risk-free edge. I didn't find anything special after this. Yeah, I mean, my philosophy was with openings. I don't usually fully give up an opening. I, I might play this against someone who, who I think doesn't... won't be prepared. Okay. Um, but. Maybe now I'll have to. I'll definitely have to go back and scour through, probably with the engines, and see if there's any deeper improvement. Hmm. Um, but I also probably need to broaden my repertoire and and just have another stable weapon yes. against uh, the Catalan. Maybe a five, which you played. Uh, yeah, when I played a five, I had no idea any theory. I just knew it was a move, and and hopes that you would be less familiar with the position. Right. So rook c d1 and this was one of the positions where you kind of equalize. Uh, by the way, here taking on e2 is a good move for you. Bishop e2. Ah. Because rook d8, rook e8. Rook e8, right. And uh, yes, there's compensation, but you just snatched a pawn. Uh, but when you went king f8, takes here, check, king mm -hmm. f2. 
uh, I was thinking that there's uh, definitely some pressure I have with my active king and pieces. But yeah, this turned out to be a... Rook C8 was... Uh, and I had, I had a lot of time and I just... It was one of those situations I made a false assumption thinking I'm, I'm actually threatening Rook C3 when in uh, reality I just lose... I basically lose a pawn and go into a losing end game. Yeah, and it's very sim. It's like not at all difficult to convert this. Like, yeah, if if I could keep rooks on the board, but but then you are losing another possible. pawn. That's the problem. Like, if you right, I wanted to play like rook b eight, rook a eight, but then you have b five. Exactly, and then it's very simple with an a four. Yeah. So after this, uh, it was. King C5 and it was very clean conversion. I tried to create some, but I, I didn't even manage to create anything. Like your king just walked up and yeah, it was it was not difficult. Like this one was uh, mm -hmm. a straightforward win. Uh, and... I regret not playing bishop f3 because like maybe you would pre-move h4 and then I take your bishop and life would be good. <laughs> you know, there's this one uh, thing which I'm not good at is pre-moves. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I know um, I, I saw a few of the clips with Adiban, like telling you when what type of situations to pre move. Yeah, but it's something you kind of develop with lots of experience. Exactly. Yeah, this is something which you need to play a lot to develop the feel for pre moves. So so sure. none of your pre moves trick tricks would have worked with me because I don't pre, pre move at all. <laughs> uh, gotcha. <laughs> But but the next game I think was uh, <clears throat> an interesting one. Uh, this was I think this equalized the score after uh, here also Amruta suggested me that instead of going bishop e7 first, go bishop g4 and knight c6 save that tempo. Mm. So these oh, are interesting. little improvements that uh, helped me. And here I think e f4 could be a good idea and g5 playing in king's gambit style. But yeah, I, I would have had no preparation here, but it would have been fun if he, a, if he went for something position. like this. Correct, correct. And I didn't sure. want to go into something like this, so I just played solidly here. Took, mm -hmm. by the way, bishop e6 is better here, I think, than, than what I played in the game. Mm. Take, take, ef, d4. And yeah, here I was uncomfortable uh, about what to do, but I think this was a good, good practical way of playing c5. Take, take knight c6 back, hitting the pawn. If you push, mm -hmm. I have knight e5. And after bishop e3, knight b4. Knight b4 was quite irritating because I can't keep my bishop here. And then like later you strike with d5. So the whole center kind of just collapses. Or like it just it makes life easier for you. Yeah. Uh, I, once you get rid of the bishop. I overall like this entire treatment with uh, knight a5, c5, oops, sorry, knight a5, c5, cd, and coming back with the knight and then doing this. I think it was pretty mm -hmm. uh, good. I mean, because I found it on the board uh, and takes d5. And this, I think, is around equal, this position. Yep. And uh, this was the second game in a row where I just, I had a, a just brain... I don't know, my brain just stopped yeah. working tactically, missed uh, just a one mover. <laughs> Rook c3, and I think after this, uh, it's just over. I, I thought you might take here and do this kind of a setup with bishop, putting the bishop back on c3. Sure. I, yeah, I took some time because I wasn't sure uh, what would give me the best chances. Maybe in hindsight, this would have been better practically, but I was already kind of defeated here. <laughs> Yeah, when you went rook f, and uh, I think this rook c6 and bringing the rook on the third rank just saved everything, and that there's no. Yeah, you were game. fully controlled, and I got no counterplay whatsoever. And yeah, this one, and by the end of it, uh, was a was a clean curve conversion. I was thankful there was a break after this game because that was like one one way to try and calm down from the tilt. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was very happy at this point because the score was three and a half, three and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I thought that I uh, had good chances going into three plus one. Uh, mm -hmm. And actually, it, it kind of continued in some way because the next game with white, I got a very pleasant position here. So I knew that you would change something. 
uh, you won't take DC four. But ah, uh, uh, so this game, I um, I stumbled into an opening. I just haven't ever checked the theory of Queen A four. No, the thing is, I saw that I'm um, main line is Queen C two, but I know that you like to play B five. Oh, so you, okay, you had some prior, I guess, knowledge. Yeah, I, I was planning to play this B five line. So that's why it's actually if someone goes A six, then it's the same stuff like Queen C four B five. But if you want to avoid right. the B five line, you go Queen A four. Queen A four, right? So I, knew I just never got around to studying this. That if you don't, if you don't do well in this line, D C four, you mm -hmm. will shift to this line. So I had also prepared uh, this one. And uh, here, this one is supposed to be very solid for white. Takes, you have to take with the knight. Okay, so this is where my, my flaws and opening knowledge uh, kind of hurt me. Yeah, because after bishop takes knight g5, threatening a mate, mm -hmm. uh, bishop g5, this is a risk-free edge for white, basically. Yeah, especially like in these structures, if black can't effectively get in c5 yes then it's really unpleasant because the c pawn is just a weak pawn on the half open file for white this bishop is so powerful uh on c6 or just along the long diagonal um i i think this is a great thing about a match like this is you you really force me to re-examine some of the holes in my opening repertoire yeah, because and, uh, I think uh, I prepared seriously against you. Uh, uh -huh. And maybe I don't think too many people would do that. And also because I don't play so much. So I really <laughs> prepared a lot. Because most of the players who are uh, playing a lot online, they're already in touch. So they don't need to prepare a, a lot. Like in that sure. sense. So uh, knight b6, e3, uh, h5, knight d2, uh, g6 and mm -hmm. here maybe just simply knight rook a c1 and i think oops sorry rook a c1 and there's this pressure down the c file and it seemed like white is better but 94 yeah it would have been unpleasant <laughs> yeah i just rushed into this this thing uh, and i should have gone back here queen c2 mm. and perhaps it's still slightly better for white and can can push here but after after this, this is something where you know we get into that uh, repeating phenomena in this match where you defend amazingly well with the knight and also you know I am unable to break through and then I get low on time and you uh, beat me. So <laughs> yeah, the the knight is just a lot trickier in these uh these, these time scramble situations and um I was happy like with how the game progressed from here because. Yeah, you played very it was well. Yeah, uh, risk free. I think this is one moment where I I want also the viewers to figure out what White should do, especially because I was mm -hmm. very unsuccessful in the game, uh, and it goes from this very basic thing in chess uh, that bishops love open positions and knights like mm. closed positions. So White to play here. What would you play? I feel like there is maybe a game later where you had the same idea. Um, I I did rewatch some of the commentary with Vidit ah. and Adivan and Anish. Uh, but it, it was more like they were having fun rather than commentating, right? That's true. Yeah, I didn't, more, I didn't check that uh, much, but they told me that uh -huh. there was one percent commentary and ninety nine percent time pass, like they were talking about something else. I guess that's uh, yeah, they <laughs> got off topic a lot, but there there was some moment where I think it could have even been this game where they were mentioning this idea is just such a a thematic move that you should play instinctively. Yeah, guys, you are all correct here that you have to play e4 here and mm -hmm. open up the bishop. And so again, uh, and and you know, Eric, the thing is, this position after I played it later, uh, so it was not bad. Uh, d5, e5, when I move by you because knight is supposed to be an excellent blockader of passed pawns. Uh, 
and i just felt instinctively that i am worse here in this mm. end game i don't know if you also felt the same um i felt comfortable it was kind of hard to evaluate cuz um like i'm still kind of stuck my my rook is stuck on b6 and your rook is very active but i knew i shouldn't be in so much danger yeah and there there is potential like to go wrong for white which kind of happened in the game yes but you know the funny thing is after here uh <coughs> say king e3 this is actually almost winning for white this wow. position and i was i was very surprised with my emotions during the match huh. that i just felt like i'm lost already hmm it turns out that i'm winning uh, i mean not winning but it's just clearly like if you go something like f5 which is natural i pin here then i go to e8 and it's just like you don't have any way because rook e6 may come to king d6 and uh, it's mm. it's very difficult with my king coming in and so on so yeah your king your king is just far like it can turn into a very powerful piece and meanwhile three of my pieces are fighting for the same d6 square yeah. so and, yeah, and it's a tricky position to evaluate. I, I don't like about uh, this this entire thing about me playing online is that often I just miss evaluate the position in such a big way that I thought mm -hmm. that I'm I'm lost when actually it's mm. better. Yeah, it's a very important skill in chess to be able to evaluate things correctly because then it can affect like your your long term plans and also affects like what positions you you end up choosing to go for. Um, I mean, there may have been some kind of momentum shift where you were better yes. earlier, position transformed, and you didn't realize that you still had some advantage. Yeah, yeah. So rook f8, knight d6, and yeah, uh, well, and also here, the last position is kind of equal, but I, uh, no, no, this is not this one. This is lost. You trapped my rook beautifully. Is yeah, there there is some <laughs> messiness, I think, from both sides with the tactical precision. Like you could have taken on b5. Exactly, and yes, saved I should have taken here. Correct. And I think I could have trapped your rook uh, if I had played b4. Ah, okay. b4, um, a5, and here. And then rook d6, yeah. Got it. So, but at this point, I think we were both under 10 seconds. So uh, tactics weren't so clean. <laughs> yeah yeah so this i think this game uh i would say was uh, still the momentum was going on my side because i got a good opening position and overall it was nice but you managed mm -hmm. to beat me so it dampened a bit of my spirit and then this game i think was the most exciting one the second three plus one where ah uh, the english the oh english, sure this one this is a, oh, no, my queen game <laughs> Oh, oh no! I was very happy to see this opening too. I haven't played this in a while. Actually, I I sometimes play the same thing as with black. black. Yes, I know because you play the Grand Prix and uh, with white, so it's like reverse sure. Grand Prix. So there's one line I like to play as black, which I guess you you didn't choose is after knight g5 to play h6. And knight h3, h6, knight h3, g5. g5. Mm. And there's a Yasser Serwan game somewhere. Um, but it, it's a funny position because the, the best move for white is knight g1. So you, you walk around in like a circle, you you wind up on your starting square, but black's kind of overextended. So it's an interesting variation. Yeah, should uh, and uh, it should be very interesting uh, to play. I'll check this out with black. Yeah, there's some lines where like black's king will walk to g6 and just knock castle and just support the pawns. Uh, there's other lines where black will get in like um if white plays h4 there's some like g4 g3 line but I, i'd recommend checking the games from here because they're they're pretty interesting okay so you went uh this mm -hmm. takes castles knight f4 d6 H4. and you you play this like pretty pretty well like usually when i get this in, in online blitz I just crush the opponent positionally because they don't know what to do as black. But you actually, you you knew the, the positional plan of knight a5. Yeah, I knew that I want to do c5, b6, bishop a6 and put pressure here. It's a very typical mm -hmm. idea in the Nimzo Indian. 
but I like the way you handled it with bishop a3 uh, and stopped me from getting the c5. Like if I got c5 here, I would be very happy with my position. Sure, yeah, you get this positional bind and then bishop a6 later. Um, so I, I knew I've like usually white has to play c5 at the right moment. Yeah, and take take. And here I spent a lot of time, uh, which is maybe wrong. Uh, because then the real fireworks happened later when I had very less time. But the th thing I was confused about was whether I should go takes takes rookie eight here, which also seems playable, mm -hmm. or to play queen e seven like I did in the game. I was not sure, and I just chose this move. Yeah, it's it's a sharp position because on one hand, like I want to attack on the king side, use my bishop pair. On the other hand, my king's still in the center and. I have to be careful of my like king just getting stuck. Yeah. So you I don't have this bishop c4 move that I usually want to play. Correct. Correct. But uh, I was happy with queen a4. Queen a4 was very cool with the idea of taking here. And I have to be careful because even if I move my queen, the rook is hanging. Um, mm -hmm. I was thinking bishop d7, but I think there is c6 here, right? No, maybe. Yeah, c6 maybe is the move. Uh, I definitely consider c6. It looks to be winning material. Takes and so I take on e7, e7 take on f8, a4, and this. Yeah, and then I didn't think this is enough compensation. Maybe it is. I'm not sure though. Like after king f8 or rook f8, I think yeah, it'd still be a fight because my king side's not so developed. Yeah, but I I like queen e5 because it hits e, e, e c3 with a check, and when you played this. Uh, rookie eight. So now I have got both my pieces out from the diagonal, mm -hmm. and uh, this is where uh, Eric's tactical uh, skills came into the picture. Uh, H5. I mean, hats off Eric for finding this move. Although it doesn't work, but it's a great, uh, great move. Yeah, I mean, I actually like. I played it thinking it was one of the better lines. Mm. Of course, I, I, I assume you're not going to fall for the the mating idea. Yeah. Um, but I didn't want to commit my queen to trading on e5, and I thought this was a nice way to just make a counterattack. Yeah, I just want to ask people in the chat, what's White's <laughs> winning idea after this? Knight takes d4. This is a. This would have been like uh, I would have at least come on Eric's channel in one video then, if if this would have happened. Yeah, I would have to make a whole video about <laughs> this uh, this moment. <laughs> Because this is really nice. So my chat, yeah, my chat knows, your chat probably knows. Yes, exactly, everyone. That's that's the cool move here. Knight g6. And I was, I was just took some couple of seconds to see if anything can interpose the rook, but nothing uh -huh. was, nothing was coming in between it's a beautiful uh, attack yeah I, I had to double check it too because if, if i'm gonna sack my queen i want to be sure it's mating yeah you know i have this concept uh, uh when you see mating patterns which is like there has to be a killer so this guy is mm -hmm. the killer and there has to be a piece which covers the square of escape whom i call the watchman and mm -hmm. this is a perfect example of you know all these things working out mm -hmm. here uh Killer, Watchman, and all of it. So, uh, but I was very happy that I found Queen F4. Uh, I think you may have not spotted that yeah while playing H4. Well, I, I was aware of Queen F4. I pre-moved Pawn takes F4. Ah, you were so, aware. Okay. Yeah. So takes takes, but then I think Black is just better now. Yeah, my bishop, my bishop pair doesn't really prove its power, and you have this very key D5 square. Yeah. My King is still in the center and deep four pawns weak. So, uh, I but I knew the game would just go on. Yeah, but here, I mean, I should have uh, gone like knight c3. It's just very mm. strong. Because if you go rook d2, then I can take bc and my rook jumps in. And yeah, and rook a1 move, probably. Yeah, then also a2 is hanging and bc and then rook b, uh, I mean, a1. I can even take on A2, right? 
Yeah, I'd probably just have to accept the fact I'm losing pawns and then like try and castle as quickly as possible. And then one of my hopes is that you would take the d4 pawn, I would get bishop b2 and h6. But then I'm still probably just worse. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's your plan, yeah? Like bishop b2 here. Yeah, some eventually, maybe castling first. But like then H6, like somehow this and... Yeah, it's... Um... Yeah, it probably just doesn't work for me. It doesn't work. Yeah. Maybe this was also like so after knight c3, rook b2, cast castles. Uh I don't know here how I lost on time at this point. Like it just mm. uh it's around equal this position. I was planning bishop d3 here uh, to make the move, but it's just my time ran out. And I think this was the turning moment of the match because it was equal and then I had better positions in both these games, like mm -hmm. overall, and I lost both of them. So then yeah, It definitely I... gave me more confidence. Right. And if maybe here I could have won one of these two, it could have been a more exciting match because now you just ran away with it. Uh, there were like... What six wins that you scored uh, in this? Section. Got some uh, some nice momentum, and, and like we don't have to look at all of them so closely. I know. Uh, yes, we will not to relive the pain for you, but uh, not re just we look at the key moments of each game instead of looking it through because I I just yeah definitely. Uh, um, we won't go going so deep. through. Uh, like I was happy that you played at least one uh, knight of three b three, which I had prepared the day before. Ah yes, this one I I should not have. I mean, Amruta got very upset with me. She mm -hmm. said that you were doing well with white. Why did you have to change it? You know, like because yeah, and it could have like you, you were just affected from the last game. You exactly to these up. two games, and I just wanted to do something different. Whereas mm -hmm. the opening went very well with white. In fact, yeah. So I should not have changed, and I I think the critical mistake here was knight e5 here, uh, where I played this very instinctively, mm -hmm. and you played beautifully here. Like here, then you came here, then you brought your queen. You got a lot of initiative. Very nice. I I like this entire. Play. So instead of queen e3, I was expecting queen g5, where you you avoid the messy pawn structure, and I wasn't quite sure what to do against this. But at six. H6, queen g3. Ah, but, but now you can just go queen b2, maybe? Yeah, it's probably still better for. Because next black. move, oh, b2 actually, is yeah. coming in. Yeah, queen b2 is actually quite nice. And it hits here. And I I don't know like what, what this queen is doing. I thought if I exchange the queens, I might get some chance with defending. Mm -hmm. Like, this was one of those cases where I felt like I should defend like you, you know? Uh, give, yeah, just give, hunker down. <laughs> give no chance, but I was not so successful. Like uh, you, I mean, I think you did a pretty good job for the most part. It was just like the, the time eventually yeah. got to you, and then there was some messy. There was some messiness later in the end game. This one here, rook c one was a good move for you. I think you would have won uh, uh, rook c one because uh, you are threatening rook a one with uh, maybe bishop b1 ideas but also oh, like wow. i just can't move if i go king d2 rook a1 i ca i can't go up because my bishop hangs otherwise a2 hangs and it's a very uncomfortable position yeah i guess um i mean i knew you were a bit restricted but i didn't realize how powerful this could be as rook a1 move i just didn't want to so i was i had in the back of my mind here that i don't want to go in too deep with my rook and then get stuck like what happened to you in that previous game. <laughs> so Yeah, right. True. I was having nightmares from my own uh <laughs> victory from <laughs> earlier. Yeah. And well, this was around equal. Uh I I don't know like at some point I realized that my time I was losing uh, flagging down because uh -huh. of uh, some lag. Like something was, I don't know if any of Yeah, I didn't games... realize it until later, but I think at some point you only had two bars of connection. Yeah, and maybe the fact that I lost like four or five games on time, maybe one or two mm -hmm. could have been that I had a second more and it was just uh, this. I later on in the bullet, 
I asked them and they said the ping was very low. Um, uh-huh. But which is strange cuz like you like you're a professional streamer, you do these YouTube live streams yeah. and your connection is always very stable. But I wonder if it's like the servers like when you're playing on chess.com maybe they don't have servers close to your location. That's the reason I believe because mm-hmm. when we pinged it at that point it was like I had a very low ping uh, in my on my machine and also the upload download speed was very quick but it's just that i think when you are so far away perhaps sometimes if there are some connection issues so uh-huh. uh, could be the reason uh, but uh, of course it was not the main reason at all why i lost uh, by the way i'm very happy that london happened in one of the games this was my preparation yeah so okay so the one person who i communicated with between or I like who communicated with me during one of the breaks was Levy Rosman because he was streaming commentary Hmm. and then during one of the breaks I checked my phone and he texted me why aren't you playing the London and um so I I felt obligated to play one London no and Um, the thing is I was happy (laughs) But I knew you you would be prepared, but I, I was just curious what you were preparing. And I, I was expecting this line, uh, this queen c5, or queen c7, queen takes c5. And I guess um, I just wasn't prepared specifically for rook e8. This was, I think, the main idea. Because un- mm-hmm. people, until then, I'd seen your games, knight d7. Uh, you had gone e4. e4. And then there's an interesting idea to... Like take with the bishop on e4. Like exactly. if, if they take, yeah. Take, 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 take. Here, queen e2. I'd seen your game that you had once. Oh yeah, g4. I had an improvement here actually, because I I knew you you might go into this, so I was gonna play queen d3 mm-hmm. to set up some mating ideas against h7. So here... Oh no! So if no, there, no, I just made into. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So... <laughs> And this is a checkmate. So I have to maybe go h6, but then h6 is always g4, g5 is risky. Yes. Yeah, h6, I think I think g4 would probably be the way to go. Right. Um, and then if you play f5, which actually maybe looks most logical instead of h6, mm-hmm. then I have a cool move, queen d6. And I just uh, get a slightly better endgame. Nice. Nice. So th- this was my preparation. Uh, if you if you played like normally in, instead of uh, instead of rookie eight. Ah, okay. So yeah, this was this game. There is this game Ar- uh, Nihal Sarin versus Arvind Chidambaram. Uh uh-huh. They have played this, and so rookie eight was played there by Arvind, and I had uh, worked on it beforehand, and BG four was also. Like I knew it, I, I knew that you should put your knight on d7, not c6, because the knight can then later come to c5 when the queen moves. Mm. And so here, I, I think queen b6 was a good idea with knight c5 and hitting. Interesting. This. And if you go Yeah, b4, and black has like very nice harmony here. Yeah, I go a5. And I think this might be a very stable line against the London for black. Definitely. Yeah, because if I don't go for this d takes e5, then you get this early e5 move. Yes. And it seems like it's a nice way to kind of equalize so, or even fight for an advantage. Yeah, if you go like usually bishop d3, then knight d7. Knight d7 and e5. Black is okay. Yeah, maybe there's some ways for, for white to avoid this. Like, firstly, you don't need to go bishop g3. And secondly, perhaps here knight e5 or, or maybe c3. Yeah, there, there, there are, are definitely move order nuances. Um, Maybe you will you will look into some of these, yeah, like because could for be sure. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely aware of other ideas. I've just been playing this because it usually leads to a simple position. Um, but you were clearly more prepared. Yeah, and uh, this was I think turned out to be the the this is a blunder by the way, uh, Queen C six. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I saw the idea of, of bishop b5, and I wanted to, so what I didn't see, so I saw knight f6, yeah. and I just assumed queen f6, and I don't get bishop b5, but queen f6 is queen e4. Yes, hitting here. And, and like, even here, it's it still takes precision, because you can take on f3, and I get queen h7, 
I was looking at this yesterday after the match mm, mm. and like I have to take the bishop and computer gives an edge for white but it's still a little bit murky so I wasn't so disappointed like afterwards with missing this but it's something I should at least consider mm, mm. yeah true true but once you went rook d1 knight e4 and this this is around even I think mm -hmm. but then this is a mistake uh, knight f6 was better move but I liked how you found this before. I mean, it's the only move, uh, but I I thought there must be something here. Like, it just didn't work. I thought yeah. and thought, and then I blamed And it's it. weird because I didn't see e4 coming until you played it, and it kind of provoked me to look for counterattacks. Yeah. And then the, I guess the problem for black, I'm just threatening queen takes e5. Your knight is... is uh, committed to defending the e-pawn and the e-pawn's pinned to your rook so yeah. there's more things just going wrong for black I thought for like maybe one and a half minute or something and I couldn't find a thing and then I mm -hmm. just was like what and I, I of course I'd seen that rook is hanging but it's just that uh, I got confused and I lost there I think this is a very normal way to blunder is you, you take a lot of time looking for other ideas and you circle back to an idea which maybe you forgot you rejected or you didn't look at closely enough. Yes. Um, so this, yeah, yeah, this was already like, uh, I think they call this the tilt, right? What happens like this when you keep losing one after the other? It's hard. Yeah, it's a very hard thing to reverse. Yeah. Uh, but even like from my perspective, I knew, I knew from earlier you're capable of coming back. So I really tried to just avoid blundering and, and yeah. just keep up the momentum. Yeah, I was I was there like in this game also. If you see, uh, like by the way, this is a cool cool uh, thing that you did. B five stopping. B5, yeah, uh, this is something uh, my one of my first or long time coaches exposed me to when I was maybe eighteen hundred. Mm -hmm. uh, Grandmaster Dmitry Gurevich, who plays okay. this himself sometimes. Uh huh. It's a nice way to trick opponents who want to play C four. And it can work very well in bullet when white pre moves c4 and then you take with the, the b pawn. <laughs> right. Uh, here, uh, I, I just felt that uh, you, I mean, I had some chances, of course, here. This position is, again, that classical case of weaknesses down the c file uh, mm -hmm. being slightly better. But <clears throat> yeah, this. This uh, thing where I'm trying to exchange the queens really not was not a good thing here. Yeah, it was a similar mistake maybe to the previous game where it's better for you to keep queens on the board. And this this is a game where Vidit was like shouting to play e4. Because ah, again, you don't mind the isolated pawn. You want to open your bishop. Exactly, exactly. And also e4 or even just improve the position because black really can't do much right now. Here. Sure. So, yeah, white should be in no rush here. Yeah, this uh, was not good. And again, this was one of those cases in the match where I thought my bishop is horrible. But turns mm -hmm. out that there's one position somewhere around here. Like You can get counterplay. Like I, a, even a5, a6. Exactly. But... I should push the pawn to a6. I'm, I'm just not, uh, I was just not looking for my chances. And uh, the funny thing is here, when I checked with the engine, this is... A winning position for white. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm yeah, I mean, your your A-pawn is strong. Exactly. And I'm actually. thinking to myself, how am I going to defend and stuff like that? So clearly underestimating the potentials of the bishop and trumps in my position. Hmm. That's actually really fascinating, I guess. Uh, like you just pretend, you work around my knight. Like you're threatening to push a5 if i play rook a5 your bishop finds a nice home on c4 and then there's always a looming idea yeah, of bishop f7 this king, and your king can, can come also go like this yeah and my knight's just a decoration on c3 like it looks nice but it's not doing anything right right and also here uh i think another game where it was around equal but i lost on time so uh yeah this was not the mm -hmm. best and then i think this was the last game in the or or we start ah yeah this was the last game in the three plus one section uh, and this was very cool game because 
you played c4 and i played something that i've never done in my life this g6 variation ah uh, yeah which is a very like it, it's a type of opening it just turns into a chess game and it's a close to equal like you outplayed me you you played it really nice here yeah i i got this uh, very good attack with f5 f4 mm -hmm. maybe it was a bit too soon uh could do rook f7 rook f8 but F4 but and... f4 it put me under pressure and the the only like again great defense by you queen g4 and uh this entire thing the the only thing which i regret in this game queen is g3. that yes the, the the i saw this move but a sec like a millisecond too late before making this move mm. like and then somehow uh <laughs> you checkmated me here with queen g8 next so. yeah I, I know you were uh you were well below 10 seconds yeah um so i, I was very fortunate because you you could have easily won this game and had some momentum back on your side true true but uh yeah this was very cool uh you you won six and then i mean there was a huge gap of six points and you being a superior bullet player, I, I knew that my chances were less. But I, mm -hmm. I was happy that uh, in the bullet, I could at least win a couple of games. <laughs> well, you had, um, I think, yeah, a, a couple of the games that you won were like really smooth for you in the bullet. But then there was this one game I wanted to ask you about because you, I think it was all preparation, yes. this queen f4 move. Yes, yes, I want to. That's my favorite. It all, it all started with like d5 oh. and then sack the exchange. So what happened was that this uh, from black side, I prepared this line because I felt mm -hmm. like you always went for this setup with uh, bishop e3, queen b1, queen a2. So I was just playing around with my engine and asking it what to do. And I realized that no one was trying to play the most accurate way, which was to take, take and put the knight on c5. And mm -hmm. so this already gives black a very comfortable situation where I'm hitting this pawn. And then I thought, let's go one more deeper and f3, it should minus two. And I asked myself, how is it minus two? Because it looks like a normal position. And that's where it's the engine said d5. And I said, what happens here? Takes, takes and queen f4. And I just put this in like in my preparation it's incredible and it happened on the board uh, because i knew that you will do this queen b1 queen a2 idea uh, i mean i, I was... just played all my natural moves not realizing there's there's anything to worry about exactly and this line uh i saw it till this point my prep ended at queen b6 because i was just making some moves mm. and the funny thing is the moment it ended, I blundered uh, with, with Rook B7. That's my one like tactical <laughs> idea in the position. Yeah. And, and the thing is, if I take Queen B7, it's better for me, uh, this position. Mm -hmm. But after this, you you spotted this so well. I mean, this is really big, big credit to you to see Rook E6, Rook E6 and Rook E6. I mean, very yeah, good. it's actually, it's an interesting concept. Of course, like I, I want to make use of my queen aligned with your king. Yeah. But the fact that your queen has basically no square, like wherever you you move your queen, I attack with my rook. So you can try and run, but you can't hide. Yeah, beautiful. And I, I tried, this, this, is, this game, and there was which uh, another game like uh, the B4 game where my knight was on C5, the London game, are two mm -hmm. of the games where I tried to think and think. I knew there must be something that exists, but there was mm -hmm. nothing, and I just lost here. So yeah. I mean, I still think your your preparation was more beautiful. Like the fact that you were able to predict this and and find like the crushing engine line. And you you, you should watch the uh, the replay of the commentary with Vidit and Anish. Okay. Because they were so impressed, like how you found rook takes e three and queen f four so quickly. Ah. Like Anish's expression was was priceless. <laughs> Anish Anish asked me afterwards when I went there after uh -huh. the street, and he he asked me if uh, and I said prep, and he was like, oh thank God, because he <laughs> he felt like oh if you found this in a millisecond, then that was crazy. But it's it's actually it's pretty impressive because like the the line is it's not at all really theoretical like there's probably no games in that position 
but you're able to predict it because you check my games. And yeah, the main thing it's is just a, what, what yeah, I saw online. from your games is that you have certain patterns that you play in some openings which you like to follow, like queen b1, mm -hmm. queen a2 in the Philidor uh, or certain things. And you like doing it again and again. So I could, even if the lines may not be the same, like you may go h3 first or you may go bishop e3, but I knew that you will play this idea because you like mm. doing it. So that was how I tried to uh, read into it. But of course, uh, preparing is just one part of chess. Then you have to actually win the... Still have to execute and convert <laughs> yeah. better positions. You have to convert those. So that's where you were so much superior. And uh, it was it was amazing. I mean, I, I loved uh, the entire process of playing against you, but also preparing for this match. I mean, it brought me back to... Uh, playing because I hardly play uh, chess. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely a, a big kind of learning experience and uh, it holds you accountable to actually studying chess more in depth than you would normally do. Um, so it's, it's fun to kind of partake in these. Yes. I wanted to ask, is there, it, like with the preparation you did, I assume you, you just kind of manually use the engine, but I was curious because you're you're a lot more knowledgeable about chess space is there a feature in chess space which can help like automate finding holes in a player's repertoire uh, or that's still something you have to kind of do manually so so there is no uh, way like directly to find the holes so what i did mm -hmm. was i made a tree of your games and i tried to figure out that way uh, gotcha. But there is one way in which you can you can do is you can like if you have games, let's say your next opponent, you can get his games, select all the games and go for tactical analysis. Oh, uh, so there if you select all the games in the database, right click it, there's a button called tactical analysis. And then you can just go to sleep. Uh, and by the morning when you wake up, all the games are analyzed with critical mistakes that have been made Interesting. in them. So you can then sit and maybe just look over them uh, and try to figure out some pattern where he's blundering uh, some knight forks in every game or things like that and could give you very good insights. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I see the feature. I have chess phase 15, but yeah, uh, it's there on, it looks like it still works. It, it uh, was introduced in 15. It's also there on 16. So. Mm. If you uh, use that, would be nice. Yeah, that's really nice. Uh, you, using chess space is actually something I want to do a bit more of on stream, because it's like it's a software that uh, it just has so so many like powerful features that uh, yes, not too many people actually talk about. You, if you want to so. learn some of the features, we can do a stream together. And I can show you because there are some very that'd be cool really cool. Ones. Uh, mm -hmm. so maybe we can plan something on that because I, myself, once I had a training session with all 2,600 plus GMs and I showed them some of the features and they're like, oh my God, I didn't know this exists. And you know, mm -hmm. there are people who are using chess base all their life, but they don't know how to use it so well. So it's, it could help in getting more points. Interesting. Yeah, actually like I've. Like I'm decently knowledgeable. Like back when I was in college, I, I gave a lecture on how to use chess base to like all the, the grandmasters on my my university team. Okay. Um, but a lot of them like just weren't tech savvy. So it was more about like managing your folder structure and uh being able to save your games and preparing for opponents. But I, I know there's a lot of features which I've I have yet to explore. So yeah, yeah, it'd be super cool to I'll, do a, I'll write to a you chess based we collaboration. Can, we can uh, plan something on that. That's awesome. Sweet. Great. Great. But uh, yeah, uh, so to the, all the viewers who uh, didn't see the match, Eric won with a score of 15 and a half, five and a half. Uh, but, but Eric, uh, it was closer than that. Yeah, the score line. Uh, it definitely felt like, yeah, okay. that's usually how it goes. Like you put in so much energy and like every game there were missed chances for both sides. So, um, yeah, I've, um, I, I knew it was going to be tough and, um, yeah, maybe, maybe someday we'll get to play again. You can try and get revenge. Sure. Sure. I will, I will look forward to it, but for now 
all the best to you for your match uh, against Levy. I think he's a very strong opponent and a lot yeah. of people are looking forward to that match as well because, you know, like two of the big chess streamers facing off against each other. So that would be nice. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Should be should be fun. Hopefully it gets uh gets a decent amount of viewership. I know our match, like it, it reached like there were so many streams doing commentary on it, reached probably hundreds of thousands of people yes. throughout the uh the few hours. So yeah, definitely looking looking forward to the next match. And yeah, thanks so much for taking the time to uh to to look over these games. Yeah, um, I, I enjoyed this uh, entire process uh, of, and I also understood some of the flaws in my thinking, which one of which is like, uh, don't underestimate the bishop, you know, which is with such patterns are, uh, I think I are good to know now that mm -hmm. if I have another, of course, there's no match, but if I had another match, I would be more careful about it. So. Uh, but but you agreeing to do this thanks a lot for your time and uh, good Thank luck too. for the next match all right thanks so much sagar really appreciate it take care take care eric bye bye guys that was eric uh, and it was beautiful talking to him about all the games uh, of course we didn't analyze the bullet games too much in depth because those games were more about speed than thought uh, behind it. Uh, I had analyzed them as well, but uh, for, you know, keeping the time under, uh, keeping it in mind, we just decided not to look at uh, all of them. But thank you so much, uh, everyone uh, who watched this. I think one of the things I have learned as a chess player is that every opportunity you get to learn should be used uh should be capitalized on and eric this match with eric i think analyzing with him today gave me new insights he shared so many new ideas in his opening preparation uh, in the london system in e4 e5 in the karo khan and all of this and i'm sure all all of you would have learned something from it uh so my my advice to all of you is Always try to play well and try to win. But in case you do not win, then try to learn from your opponent. That would be the best thing to do. And uh, I want to... Are there any messages? Yeah, Gurkirat, thank you for putting in uh, links to Eric's all the handles. So guys, you can follow Eric Rosen on his Twitch, YouTube. Uh, he streams every day and he's a very nice um thing uh, sc says anish called you eric frozen me yeah <laughs> ashwat raja thank you for organizing this stream sagar bhai yes uh i enjoyed doing this uh, and also levy versus eric is on nine that's that's when it is and yeah just a random guy thanks for uh joining peter kavanaugh or oh, eric also has a photography page yes he's an excellent photographer if you check on instagram he takes brilliant pictures keith mascareners looking forward to you playing more tournaments like this sagar thank you siddharth ranadev very insightful siddharth ranadev you're not a mod yeah let me make you a mod Thank you. Thank you guys for uh, liking this stream and I hope that I'll be back uh, to playing more. I think right now I'm on the best shape of playing chess I have been in all these months. So if I continue practicing, I can keep improving. So that's what I want to continue. I will make time for that. And uh, thank you all for tuning in and see you all very soon. Take care. Bye bye.